Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over pathophysiology study tips. Pathophysiology is a class that most nursing programs require students to take and this class can be difficult if you don't go into it knowing what to expect and a study plan. So in this video what I'm going to go over with you is what to expect in this class and give you some tips on how to succeed in pathophysiology. But first let's talk about what is pathophysiology? What are you going to be studying in this class? Well, what you're going to be studying is what is happening in the body when diseases or injuries cause the body to react in an abnormal way. So what we're going to be learning about is abnormal processes that will happen in the body due to a disease. Now things you need to know about this class. This class is very content heavy. The exams will cover a lot of content and a lot of concepts. And normally professors are going, your grade's gonna be weighted heavily on how you perform on exams. You may have five to six exams, may have some quizzes here and there, but what you score on those exams is what's gonna give you your grade in this class. This class requires you that you go into the class with a study plan and you stick to it. So if you're fixing to take this class, maybe in the semester coming up or whatever, look at your schedule, look at what other classes you're gonna be taking and know that you're gonna to have to dedicate a lot of time to this class and develop a plan on how you're gonna study and stick to it. This class is not a class where you can study maybe one to two days before the exam. Um, if you do this, you will most likely not perform well on the exam because one to two days is not gonna give you enough time to understand this material. You don't wanna memorize your material in patho, you wanna understand it. And there's a lot of material, so there's no way you're gonna learn it in one to two days. So you need to be studying throughout every single week, maybe even every day if you're not performing well in this class to get through this class. Next, pathophysiology is a type of class where you have to know your anatomy and physiology knowledge that you learned whenever you took anatomy and physiology because you're gonna be using it for this class. You're gonna to have to be able to understand how the body works normally. For instance, when the body's healthy and working normally, potassium. What does potassium do in the body? It helps nerve and muscle function roles. So in patho, what you're gonna be learning about is hyperkalemia, where you have high potassium levels, and hypokalemia, where you have low potassium levels. And you need to know what's happening in the body when you have too much potassium and too low potassium. You're gonna be learning in pathophysiology what's happening on that cellular level that's gonna cause the heart to act crazy with EKG changes, and what is literally going on cellularly in the body with this. So you need to know the baseline foundation of what normally happens and then you're gonna see what's gonna happen abnormally. Then it'll lead to the patient's signs and symptoms and what organ systems are gonna be affected due to this that depends on potassium and how your body tries to compensate because with almost every disease, injury that goes on, the body tries to compensate as a protective mechanism to keep you alive and you'll be learning that as well. Now let's look at some tips for success in pathophysiology. What are some things that you can do to help you get through this class and make the best grade possible? Okay, tip number one, know your anatomy and physiology. You need to know the basics. You don't need to be a genius in anatomy and physiology and remember every single thing and had to make A's in the class to succeed in this class. Not at all. All you need to do is you need to brush up your knowledge on every system you're gonna be covering. For instance, how I recommend doing this is set, look ahead of time. Um, see what your professor is gonna be covering. For instance, say that your teacher is gonna be covering the respiratory system tomorrow and you're gonna be covering respiratory disorders like pneumonia, COPD, and things like that. So what you wanna do the night before, you want to um, research and look at lung anatomy and physiology and look specifically at gas exchange and how about the alveoli sacs and how gas exchange with carbon dioxide and oxygen is. And 
Then whenever you go to class and your professor's talking about pneumonia, where um, it's due to the alveoli sacs being inflamed and you will have respiratory acidosis because the body is retaining the carbon dioxide and not getting in enough oxygen, you will know that normally you have those things happening but because of what's going on in pneumonia, this isn't happening because that's what patho is going to do. It's going to take what the respiratory system is normally doing and you're going to apply a disease to it and you have to look at how the body is trying to correct that and how it's going to affect the body, those signs and symptoms. Okay, next, know your professor. Every professor has a different teaching style and sometimes you're going to have a professor that will tell you everything you need to know for the exam, give you a study guide and will pre prepare you very well for the exam. Then on the flip side, you may have a professor that I like to refer to as the scavenger hunt professor. They lecture in class, but they don't give you everything you're supposed to know because they expect you to read in the textbook, look through your notes and research it yourself. So if you do happen to have that type of teaching style, what you need to do is you need to ask previous students who took that class and passed, ask them how the tests are set up, how did they study to pass the class, and you need to know going ahead of time into that class that you're going to be doing a lot of studying on your own and a lot of researching on your own. So you'll definitely need to get a study guide for this class, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, which one I recommend that I use. Okay, next, learn your teaching, your learning style. How do you learn the best? Um, every person learns differently. Some people learn visually, some people learn best by listening, some people are a mixture. So I have a video on how to determine what type of learner you are. A card should be popping up and you can access that because that is the key to learning how to study because with pathophysiology to pass the class you have to study and you need to know where you should be investing your time at with studying methods in order to pass this class. So for instance, I'll give you some things of what I've done. For this class. Okay, I am an auditory learner. I'm a little bit of a mixture of everything, but I learn by listening. So I would listen to recorded lecture lectures from my patho professor and I would listen to them over and over. And um, as I listen, I would take notes and um, I would notice that every time I repeated the lecture, I would learn new things that I didn't pick up before. And then things I was confused on, I would go back and the textbook and I would reread it, I'd read my notes and I would look in the study guide and I was learning the material rather than just memorizing concepts. Then I'm also a little bit of a read write learner. So what I would do is I would read my notes out loud and then I would rewrite them in my own words and I would teach them to that myself, maybe talk to my husband about them and just try to teach others which helps you learn even more. Now, say that you're a visual learner, what's good for you to do? Um, look in your patho book, they have diagrams. You can look at those, see how that works, formulate that in your mind, draw it out yourself, or get on YouTube and watch videos that have illustrations that go along with the lectures. And a lot of my videos have that. So if you are gonna be taking patho, be sure to check out my videos to help you in that class because that will help you learn this material. Another thing you can do, because in patho there's going to be a lot of disease processes that are very similar, like hypo and hyperkalemia, respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. There's just various different things about them. So create mnemonics or find mnemonics to help you remember these disease processes because there's a lot of things you have to remember and you need to make learning fun and fast so you can digest as much material as you can. Next, don't memorize the material, but understand it. And I touched on this a little bit while I was going over this because every chapter builds upon itself. So you need to really make sure you understood the material in chapter three before you get to chapter four and five. Also, your finals tend to be comprehensive. So you're gonna have to know everything for that final that you've learned. And if you've just memorized, Whenever you get done with the test, your mind likes to do a brain dump and you get rid of that material and you just move on. But you need to understand this material for patho. And then another thing is, as a nurse, you need to know 
the patho because it's the reasoning for why you're seeing these certain signs and symptoms in these patients and why you're doing your specific nursing interventions for that patient. Next, make this class your number one priority. And um, if you get to pick what classes you can take every semester, Try to take an easier class load during um, the time you have to take pathophysiology. So you can dedicate more time studying to this class because like I said at the beginning, you're going to have to study throughout the week. You can't just cram one to two days before the exam. So you wanna be reviewing before you go to class and the day after class so you can retain that lecture material. Next, the last point is to get a study guide to help break down that important material. And what study guide I recommend is called Pearson Reviews and Rationales Pathophysiology. I actually recommend these book series. They have like maternity, pharmacology, all those for your nursing classes. I use them. They are great. They help me get through nursing school because I don't know if you've looked at your pathophysiology book yet, but it's like this thick and every page of the writing's like this big and there's just like words everywhere and it's a lot of reading and there is no way you can read from the first word of the chapter to the next to the very last word of the chapter you would be spending the whole semester just trying to get through one chapter and what you need to do is you need to get the study guide which will break down the material and tell you what you need to know for exams that can be test questions. The book also has review questions. And then go back and review in your book if you need more of an explanation because your textbook is great whenever you don't understand something. For instance, say you're studying congestive heart failure and you don't truly understand why the heart is having pump failure and why in right-sided heart failure you're getting mainly fluid build up in the abdomen, rather the lungs. So um, the book can help with that, but the study guide is really gonna break that material down for you. And if you feel like you're gonna struggle in this class, I really recommend getting this book. Okay, so that is some study tips for pathophysiology. I wish you the best in this class, and be sure to check out my other videos where I give you some tips on how to study and other classes you'll um, be taking in nursing school. So thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel.